Let's move on. John Evans uh, is the Wicklow football manager, obviously. Um, they're one of the first teams out of the championship, unfortunately, after the weekend's events. And uh, I'm delighted to say he's with us now. John, good morning to you. Thanks for taking the call. Morning, Tommy. How are you doing? It's Ger, it's Ger and uh, Owen here. How are you doing? Oh, sorry, Owen. Uh, how are you keeping? Good. <laughs> good stuff, yeah. How are you getting on? More to the point after the weekend. Yeah, uh, OK. Not too bad. Alive and kicking, uh, thanks, thankfully. Um, yeah, I suppose... Uh, we we started the championship, um, you know, in in great gusto and uh, taking on a Division Three side in Offaly, and uh, after a long sojourn of of uh, extra time, uh, we got home ho home and hosed out of it, and uh, yeah, it was just it was a great start to the championship, and uh, we worked extremely hard because we did um, such a bad bad winter, and training was horrible, and conditions were horrible, and. You know, we weren't getting results either and didn't play our full complement of games. So, um, we, we, you know, we were full of energy, I suppose, and wanted to have a good cut. And, but unfortunately, the next two draws didn't go away, Tommy, you know, in the so far as that when you're... Uh, it's grand taking on a Division 3 team, but taking on uh, Division 1 teams are, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's nigh and impossible, you know, taking on... But it's, well, obviously the dubs. But Cavan um, uh, now, who have returned, who are in Division 1, down to 2 and back up to Division 1, you know. So taking on that type of artillery um, uh, is is a bridge too far for Wicklow at the moment, anyway. What are you thinking before uh, that Dublin game, John? Because it seems like, not a hopeless cause, but it seems like a very, very big outside shot that uh, a team like Wicklow could, at this moment in time, be competitive against Dublin. Is it very, very hard to keep up spirits in the camp, even despite the fact that we were just coming off a championship win? It's hard to believe this, but it was actually exciting. It was a brilliant, it was a brilliant challenge. And uh, I suppose to the fact that Wicklow are neighbours of, of uh, Dublin as well, you know, uh, there was absolutely no fear element. Uh, they played with abandon. They, <laughs> they went at the game. I remember the start of the game. We had four or five chances, and uh, while we didn't, we hadn't scored. We we went, we went very close, and the whole right throughout the whole game, we kept playing and kept playing, kept playing, and you know they, they liked it, they loved it. Uh, uh, maybe it was the fact that the the, the the victory wasn't in sight, and they could play to the to what. Um, to the fact that, that they could enjoy themselves and give it their full lot, I suppose. Is that, uh, the, in your opinion, the very best approach to playing against Dublin, just to play your own game, to go out and attack rather than set up shop with every single man behind the ball? Uh, no, absolutely not. It depends on who you are and what you are, you know, uh, where you are. I mean, if you're a Division 4 or, or 3 team, you certainly, uh, you know, your, your chances of, li of winning, and I'm, you know, I suppose I set out my stall in the start against Dublin and saying, hey, they could beat us by 10 or 20 or 30 points if they wanted to. And, um, you know, from there on, everything is a bonus. So, But if you're a Division 2 team and a uh, Division 1 team, you certainly would be taking a completely different approach to it than you would if you were a Division 4 and 3 team. John, you mentioned not playing your full complement of league games. I mean, ultimately, that decision, it... it, it uh, takes away from you the opportunity of getting two 70-minute matches for your paddle where, you know, at, as the league progresses, you're trying new players and new stuff out, but it also leaves you at the bottom of the table because you don't get the opportunity to uh, win any of those games. Did that have a knock-on impact into the summer? Um, it did for a while, I have to say, yes. That, uh, I mean, for instance, in the, in the championship game, the, the, our last outing against Kevin, we had five new starters. We had uh, and five uh, five new subs that came on. So there was ten guys there, and you like to see uh, uh, competitive uh, these boys under a competitive edge uh, uh, or trial, I should say. And uh, you know, they they, they certainly um, the extra games do help you. But look, it was such a horrible winter for us, and and. I mean, pe most people had snow for once. We had snow bloody well three times, and and it, and it went on and on. I took a photograph going over the week gap three weeks afterwards, and there was still two feet of snow there. But where we were training in Balnakil, it was it up so high, and 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 the conditions were treacherous to even get there, not a mine train. So a lot of our our our, um, our training had to be reverted to uh, lower ground, we call it, and. 
yeah, it certainly affected not play, uh, the question you asked, is, uh, not playing those games uh, sort of with, to the double-edged sword on us that cut us both ways. Um, no games and not being able to train. What does that do then to, to the players' group in terms of morale when once you get into the summertime? Because obviously now it's still fairly early in the summer and that if anybody wanted to potentially go to America or whatever, they still have time to, to go ahead and do that. We're still only at the 12th of June now. But was there any issues with that post the league when there was fairly demoralising in terms of training, in terms of matches, that there would have been well, an issue well, with players like leaving the, the squad? The, the, the way to answer that is that uh, we made a lot of strides uh, uh, this year in so far as that, number one, we had all the clubs um, uh, all the clubs uh, with us this year. Every last club was represented, represented, and that's that's a big, big step going forward for for Wicklow. Uh, the second thing is that not one player left the panel to go to to go to America. They they they, they stayed around. Yes, guys got injured and one one thing and another, but uh, nobody went travelling. And uh, it was a big, big part of when I came to Wicklow is that. I, I emailed players that were abroad that had gone travelling, and a lot of some, there's a good few players returning now this summer. So, look, I, I, I think um, the morale was absolutely top class. I will say that that when these boys put their heads to it, their shoulder to the wheel, their heads together, the clubs together, um, not going to on J ones even and, and uh, travelling to America. So we were rock solid that way. There was no problem with morale in, in, in Wicklow, guaranteed. And next year, John, are you signed up already for next year? Do you know? Is that going to be part of your plans? Well, all that is supposed to be sanctioned because, look, I, I'm, I'm in there for a two-year stint. Uh, I suppose uh, I've, I've taken on the job with that in mind, introducing new players um, and, and, and coaching them and, and taking the under-20s. And uh, there's quite an exciting bunch of players coming through, and I'd like to be able to handle them. And uh, that's the commitment I gave in the staff, anyway. Whether I'd be able to, whether I, it could be um, allowed go forward or not, I don't know. I, because I like to review it after every year. That's fair enough. One thing we did want to talk to you about was um, the the way that the championship is structured now. Dublin obviously are playing uh, two of their three games in the Super Eights in Croker, and it looks like uh, the Ulster Championship. The match against the Ulster champions, so that would be Donegal or Fermanagh, will end up being at the neutral venue of Croke Park. As an intercounty manager who you know, has come up against the dubs and understands exactly how powerful they are, even out of Croker, what's your take on, on the fairness of uh, Dublin having two of their three games in the Super 8s in Croker? Well, the first thing I would say is that Dublin are so good that if you start to... Uh uh, worrying about fairness and and they have other advantages, whether it be financial or, or give. every every county, every single county. And I know when I was with Tipperary and Roscommon uh, and Meat, if you wanted to play in Crow Park, that's the place you play. But whether you say if you go into the mindset of saying it's an advantage, Dublin, you may as well not play football at all. So I look. Dublin or Dublin, there's no point in blip, uh, landing everything on Dublin's doorstep. Uh, if you get to the Super 8s, you're good enough. If you're in the Super 8s, you need to compete, and the more games you get, the better. Uh, now, where it is a disadvantage, I see, is that uh, you know weaker teams that wouldn't have uh, a stronger panel, and I'm talking about an extended panel, but that over those three games, certainly it's going to be huge, huge impact. But look, Dublin themselves are seeing the, the, the guillotine drop on them at the moment with the unfortunate... Uh, Injuries to to Cluxton and that and, uh, and Jack McCaffrey is yeah is back I know and uh, a couple of more but look it's going to ta- be a test on everybody but the one thing you don't go into these super eights is with a, a negative mindset. But do you not think that, say, for example, when you speak about some of the weaker counties there, it's their day out and everybody wants to play in Crow Park, and that's fair enough. But for a county like Donegal or Fermanagh, surely the opportunity of playing them in Enniskillen or in Ballybuffet or maybe even Clonus, it's that two or three point swing, which might actually be the deficit between themselves and, well, and Dublin at this point. Yes, I certainly see it. But uh, my, my understanding was that there's one home, one away, and one neutral. But for now, Dublin, I know it's the two home, essentially. One, uh, is that they're uh, saying uh, that uh, it would be in Crow Park, but. That, of course, it's an advantage. Uh, you, you'd like to have the home one. Um, but I, I think it should be the, the county's calling on that. 
Yeah, well, they should definitely uh, kick up a bit of a stink about it. The trouble is, if you kick up any stink about it, everyone's like, oh, that's, you know, you've got the wrong attitude already. You need, you need strong county boards to do it on the manager's behalf, basically. Yeah, look, the, the, the super eights, uh, look, uh, lads, are, are uh, there is absolutely no doubt it's, it's for the stronger team. It's strong for the team that has uh, not alone a 26, but probably, I, I, and I, I would not exaggerate it, but probably a 32-strong panel so that you can draw and draw and draw for injuries and indeed rest players and indeed, uh, you know, the, uh, you have to plan that way because um, you definitely need 32 players going fully fit, ready to rock. Because if you're going to be going into extra time, you're looking, you're looking at everybody now. And a big thing I'm looking at here is referees. They're now not happy with three minutes and four minutes. I see six, seven, eight, nine minutes now if there's an injury, of course. But there, there, there's six or seven minutes uh, given to games and, uh, you know, the games that are so lopsided. What the hell are they at? Like, you know? yeah, yeah. But you do need a big panel for this extended time. Because nowadays, I think in our game against Offaly, we played 102 minutes between um, normal time, uh, injury time, extra time, injury time, and injury time. Mm. So, look, I mean, today's game is no longer just about the 70 minutes. It's, it's, you have to have an extendedly strong panel. Uh, uh, you have to have really guys really on the day. And if you're going to week after week after week, look at Tipperary, how they in the hurling, they bellied up because they couldn't keep at it. And any team that's gone at it three, four days, weeks on the trot, we're only amateurs. You know, you want a huge panel for it. Yeah, there's no question you're right on that one that the Super 8 is a, a championship tweak that's definitely going to benefit the stronger counties with a deeper panel. If you could pick one championship tweak that uh, Tom Ryan could come up with, if, if somehow the GA were ripping up the championship structure and starting again, what would it be, John? I'm definitely going to say here hey, a second referee. <laughs> There's so much stuff missing. Uh, the referees are missing so much stuff. This is, uh, you know, I, I certainly believe that uh, number one, either their um, uh, umpires or, or linesmen are not helping them because they're missing it blaringly, uh, blatantly obvious. They're missing stuff and they're not being they're not being communicated by by linesmen into the referee to say, hey, you've it, it, there's a free here, stop the play, discuss it, and, and give a verdict on it. You know, um, yeah, that'd be the first thing, that's because it's, it rankles in my mind so, so much. There's, there's so many dubious calls made. Calls missed, I think. Um, when I say calls missed, fouls missed, and uh, off-the-ball stuff type of thing, not necessarily. But in the play, the referee is just not seeing uh, obvious fouls. And he can be, you know... He's in, in, in amongst 30 guys. He can be uh, unsighted. He can be in position wrong. Um, he just may see it from a different angle. You look at it from the front, it's not a foul. You look from the back, it is a foul. Yeah. So, uh, that would be my big one. But uh, tweaking anything, I certainly think we, we've learned from the hurling anyway that if you go three or four or five weeks on the trot, you know, you're not going to get the performance out of players. And that is the big one. If, you, if, if your energy drops and injuries come in, you're going to see weakened teams. And remember this, you are going to see weakened teams by the third round and facing into an All-Ireland semi-final. Yeah, no, for sure. John, enjoy your summer off. Thanks very much for talking to us this morning. Lovely talking to you, let's. Okay.